Hey guys, Mr. Champion here, and we're starting section two of chapter five, turmoil over taxation. Your essential question for this section, how did tensions grow between Britain and its American colonies? In order to answer this, you should be able to describe how Britain tried to ease growing tensions on the American frontier, list ways colonists rejected taxation by parliament, identify new colonial leaders, and then lastly, explain events that led to the Boston Massacre. Let's look at the American frontier. As you remember, the French uh, is gone and the British settlers are moving uh, towards uh, or past the Appalachian Mountains after the French and Indian War. Uh, because of this, there are, are greater clashes with Native American tribes. Some of those tribes include Seneca, Delaware, Swanee, Ottawa, uh, as we're going to look at Pontiac, Miami, and the Huron Indian groups. Lord Jeffrey Amherst, as he was sent to help during the French and Indian War, is sent to the Ohio River Valley region uh, to bring order. Uh, in the process, what takes place is uh, the raising of the prices for trading goods uh, in this region, uh, and then secondly, allowing settlers to build farms and forts. Now, as you can imagine, um, this did not uh, sit well with the Native Americans. In fact, one particular uh, leader, Pontiac, uh, he said this, uh, in referring to the, to the British, they are dogs dressed in red who, came, uh, who have come to rob us of our hunting ground and driving away the game, referring to the, the, the animal. Uh, and so Pontiac was not sat, uh, happy with the British. And so um, from uh, 1763 to about 1769, you had uh, major clashes. As a result, the proclamation of 1763 uh, was uh, instituted by the British. Um, basically, what they decided to do is along this imaginary line uh, in the Appalachian Mountains um, to not allow the colonists to move beyond this point. And then even those who had already established themselves uh, in this region or beyond the Appalachian Mountains, they said that they had to return. So you can imagine how uh, unhappy the colonists would be because of this and, and, and um, because the British are now messing with their livelihood. Uh, however, uh, the British uh, uh, still sent more and more troops uh, to enforce this proclamation. I'm not really concerned about the, uh, the colonists but about um, having to defend those colonists. Colonists such as uh, Daniel Boone uh, ignored this and so the British, in fact, were still uh, fighting and battling with the Native Americans in the Ohio River Valley. As a result, the British felt that the colonists uh, needed to help uh, pay for the debt, um, first for the French and Indian War, but also for the expense that was being incurred for having to protect them beyond the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, Prime Minister George uh, Greenville uh, said that the burden should be placed uh, more on the colonists uh, as opposed to the British. And so uh, they instituted uh, a, a sugar tax. Uh, originally the tax was uh, uh, such that the uh, merchants decided that they wouldn't pay the tax but this rather smuggle in the, um, the molasses into the colonies. And so the British decided to lower the tax and uh, institute uh, um, a, a lower price that they would have to pay um, and strictly enforce the Sh uh, Sugar Act. Secondly, uh, they instituted a stamp act. Basically, uh, it put a tax on all kind of legal documents, um, as you see here, wills, diplomas, marriage papers. Basically, um, every part of um, col colonial life was being taxed, uh, uh, not only through the SUG Act, but through the stamp act, and we're gonna see others that follow. So let's quickly recap. You have the colonists settle in Indian lands in the West. Pontiac doesn't like it, so war breaks out. Uh, because of the war, the British um, instituted a proclamation of 1763, stopping settlement beyond uh, the Appalachian Mountains. Um, from there, you have British troops coming stationed in the colonists. This is a major cost. As a result, the British government decides to tax the colonists. Uh, you have the Sugar Act, the Stamp Act. And from there, we see um, a major protest are going to start to um, take place in the colonies. The protests in the Stamp Act. Some of the colonists threw rocks and, uh, at agents, basically the tax collectors, uh, and some of them tarred and feathered those agents as well. Uh, the British were very shocked at the response of the, the colonists. Again, 
um, the British felt that we're trying to help you. We're trying to protect you. Um, uh, and so why would you treat us this, in this manner? Um, but why were the colonists really, really upset? One of the major reasons was this idea of no taxation without representation. Colonists insisted that they were uh, uh, the only ones who could pass taxes or their representatives um, that they elected uh, could pass, ta pass taxes, not parliament uh, way in Great Britain. Uh, and so what they do is they unite uh, in peaceful protests. The Stamp Act Congress uh, drew up a petition that was sent to King George III and to Parliament. Uh, again, really didn't get a lot of uh, a good feedback or response from uh, King George III and Parliament. And so they decided to boycott or refuse to buy British goods. And again, this did not go over well with King George uh, and the British Parliament. And so you had the Townshed Act that was passed. And basically this act uh, was uh, put a tax on things such as glass, paper, paint, lead, and uh, most of all, tea um, that was enjoyed by American colonists. And so, uh, again, this idea that every part or facet of their lives, the colonists, are being taxed by the British. Also, what took place was this idea of, of writs of assistance, um, search without reason. And so you had uh, uh, soldiers going into different homes uh, and searching homes uh, looking for those who were speaking out against uh, the British government and those who were um, organizing um, uh, against the British government. And so uh, the colonists uh, felt that this violated their rights as, citizens, as British citizens. They were being treated less than British, as British citizens. And so you had two major groups forming. We'll look at these groups uh, in class more and, and have a discussion. You had the Sons of Liberty and the da Daughters of Liberty, and they organized uh, secretly um, organizing to protest against what uh, Great Britain was doing or the British um, government was doing uh, to the colonists. These acts uh, led to what we know as the Boston Massacre. Basically, in uh, Boston and places like New York, which were major city, uh, cities and hubs uh, in the colonies, uh, you had protests taking place. Uh, one particular uh, uh, protest that took place around having to quarter soldiers. Uh, basically, you had to house them. Uh, again, you had soldiers who, who, who came in and uh, lived in ways that were contrary to a lot of the American colonists. Uh, you have a lot of drunkenness that was going on in, in a lot of uh, Christian homes. Uh, that the colonists felt that was unfair, uh, not only just to house them um, at, at the colonists' dime, but let alone have this the kind of, of unruliness in their homes. They really didn't like it. Um, that took place with the Court Act. So March 5th, 1770, you have colonists gathered at a Boston Custom House uh, in protest. Uh, you had the British soldiers coming uh, to uh, uh, quill this protest, and shots were fired. And we're going to look at this again uh, along with uh, the Sons and Daughters of Liberty uh, tomorrow in class, uh, and then we're going to look at the Boston Massacre. Look at some um, uh, accounts of what happened and, and come to a conclusion as to what we think really took place uh, during the Boston Massacre. Um, as a result of the Boston Massacre, a lot of the Township Acts was repealed. Um, Parliament um, uh, took back a lot of those and hoped that things would um, die down or, or calm down in the colonies. And so, uh, as I said earlier, here's a, an artist's rendition of what happened. We'll look at this particular picture along with other um, artist's renditions of these, the account uh, and, and um, analyze what we think took place. So as you, we finish up uh, our section, remember to uh, fill out your summary. Uh, if you have any questions, write those down, and we'll take a look at uh, them in class tomorrow. Thanks, and uh, have a good day.